You know what the most dangerous thing in America is, right? Nigga with a library card. <laughs> this is the most dangerous thing in America podcast. And this week on the podcast, we read Rachel Hosell Hall's new novel, These Toxic Things, which came out September 1st. And it is a thriller. Uh, I actually pre-ordered this book, got it on my, on my Kindle, um, because I live in China and I can't uh, get physical books shipped here in time. But yeah, I hadn't pre-ordered a book in a long time, but I was excited to read a thriller, wanted to read something different. I've been reading a lot of nonfiction, so it was nice to read this as a piece of uh, kind of escapism. And so a real quick plot breakdown, basically... The book follows the story of this young woman named Michaela. She's 24 years old. She is a digital archaeologist, which means she works at like a company. And I, I like this. Um, I like this in the book. She works at a company where it's kind of got like a, a little sci-fi angle. You know, it's like just if this were to take place in the just near future, although it's taking place like in 2019, 2020, by which I'm pointing like this, I mean right now. Uh, but what she does is she goes in and she takes people's memories and she writes up a little story about them and gets the pictures that they need and then they are able to uh, access them through a device probably like one of those facebook things that people didn't buy one of those things where you're just like hey show me my memory from when we drove to um las vegas and then it'll go through and and tell you about your memory so that's her job and she's working at a company with a dude who she's kind of involved with and she lives at home with her parents. And then she gets dispatched, contracted out to go work on somebody's um, memory bank. And that somebody is the proprietor of a small shop of curiosities. And the name of the shop is These Beautiful Things or Just Beautiful Things? Beautiful Things. And they work together for about a day or two. And then all of a sudden, um, the lady who works at the shop passes away under mysterious circumstances and there's a lot going on here because the plaza she works at is being uh is trying to be bought out by peter weller who's like a billionaire and there's a lot of interested parties and the people who work next to her shop at this plaza this isn't a part of um of uh los angeles uh it's like la brea and like adams it's been a while since i've lived in los angeles so they're gentrifying it. That's what we're getting at. They're gentrifying the place. That's what's happening. And um, anyway, this person turns up dead and Michaela kind of has to sort through all this stuff. And in her personal life, she's having problems too. Somebody's kind of sending her weird messages and stuff. And so she's dealing with that. So in her professional life, the person who she's contracted out to write these memories for has passed. And m mysteriously, maybe a suicide, maybe, maybe not. And she's got to finish that job. And in her personal life, she's dealing with some stuff. And yeah, and then it all comes unraveled. And that's that's basically the plot. And uh, it's a it's a page turner of a book. You know, it's over 400 pages, but I read like 80% of it yesterday um, to the point where it was 11.30 at night. That's my absolute cutoff. Got to be in bed. by Got to be asleep by 11.30 to get at least six hours. So cut myself off. But yeah, definitely was running through it yesterday a ton. And so it's a page turner. Um and the plot's good. I did have a little problem with Michaela, and I think this ultimately reflects poorly on me. Michaela's 24 years old, and she has several character traits that I just found infuriating. It's on page 132. She realizes, like, oh my god, I forgot to... I, I added the oh my god. I'm sorry. I forgot to put it back into the fridge this morning. Damn it. Moving too fast again. She just left out a quart of vanilla latte that she forgot to put back into her fridge. And I found this to be ridiculous. Um, and I was sitting there like scolding her in my head while I was reading the book going like, why doesn't she have herself more together? She's always scatterbrained and forgetting this and forgetting that. And then when I actually thought about it, because the, the next like natural thought is when, when I was 24, I didn't do things like that. But the fact of the matter is when I was 24, I was much worse than that, doing things much worse than that, uh, doing much sillier things than that. So that was ridiculous. And then there's another scene about um, 40 pages later or so where she's on a date and the dude uses the cutlery wrong. 
and she's like, oh, I can't believe you use the cutlery like this. And I was thinking like, well, that's awfully bougie of her. I can't believe she would comment on the way someone's using cutlery. I mean, I comment on the way people use cutlery all the time, all the time. So I think what it really is, is that she's young and she's sorting her life out and you kind of reading the book going like, just don't, don't do that, do this. You know, you're doing that thing wrong. Don't do that, do this. But what you're really doing is like yelling at yourself. Cause the fact of the matter is when I was 24, I was doing the exact same stuff. So if anything, um, 35 year old me uh, is just jealous of the youth and um, reading this and being upset that this person is honestly way more put together than I was 10 years ago. So uh, I, I will say regardless of whatever the reason is, if that's the reason that's sad, but that's probably the reason. But regardless of whatever the reason is, I didn't vibe with the character as much as I would have liked to. Uh, that doesn't take away from the book. The book is still really well written. The other characters are weird, uh, well drawn, but weird, unsettling, a little creepy. They help keep the story moving. So didn't take away from my appreciation for the book. It just made me not like the main character because I found her kind of annoying. But it does make me want to dig into um, Rachel Hosell Hall's other books because I know she writes a detective series. Can't remember the detective's name off the top right now. But she writes a detective series, and I would like to read that because I love stories where the detective is at the center. In this book, what we're really getting is the victim at the center, um, or potential victim, right? She doesn't actually, like, get hurt at the beginning or something. So, you know, that was just kind of a different experience, and it was a thriller, so that makes sense. Uh, but, yeah, I'm more of a detective fan anyway, so I think I'd like to check out um, a future book by Rachel Hosell Hall featuring her detective or uh, a past book featuring one of her detectives. Um, but this book, uh, for me, the protagonist, just too young for me to um, get past my own nonsense. Could not get past <laughs> my own nonsense. But yeah. Uh, all right. Well, if you want to hear a longer version or more thoughts on what I... Uh, on this book, These Toxic Things, please check out the podcast link below and subscribe to this channel and subscribe to the podcast, etc., uh, etc. Et um, all right, until then, stay safe, stay black, and keep reading. <laughs>